Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at how to acquire data from machines that are on a network. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can learn to forgive. In the forensics or IT world, there may be situations where we cannot physically reach a machine but do have network connectivity to it and have credentials to get on the machine. Or it may be a situation where it is more advantageous to extract data from the network instead of out of the data ports. For example, we may want to consider using the GigE network connection if we only have slower I.O. ports like USB 1 or USB 2 available. USB 2 is only at 480 megabits per second and GigE is at 1000 megabits per second. USB 3 is at 5 gigabits per second. Since we are doing network related commands, let's first check to see that we're on the network and able to see the other machines. To check your IP address, use the command ifconfig. Verify that you can see the other server by using ping and their IP. So on a ping 192.168.10.102 because I know that's my uh, FTP server and that's where all the data is located that I am interested in. Let's first look at how to obtain logical copies across the network. rsync is a more advanced copy command as it can copy locally or to or from another computer. A great feature of rsync is that it can operate over a network. We can use the command rsync to copy files over the network by prepending the username and hostname or IP address followed by a colon, then the path of the source files. The important thing to note is that to use rsync, we need the login credentials for the remote machine. The simplest usage for rsync is just rsync and then the source and then destination which synchronizes the folder source to a folder named destination. The source and destination paths can be appended with the user at host colon if you want to operate over a network. So for example, you can do rsync of blue monkey forensics at 192.168.10.102 colon slash Etsy password and then the destination of slash temp slash password. Or the other way of doing rsync of the source, which let's say it's slash etsy slash password, and we want to dump it over to blue monkey forensics at 192.168.10.103 colon slash mnt slash usb slash files. Let's create a new folder to hold the files we are going to acquire. So let's do make dir tilde slash target files. Then we're going to do the rsync command. So rsync dash a v. A is the archive mode, which includes uh, recursive into the directories, copying sim links, preserving modification times, permissions, groups, owners, etc. Dash V is for verbose, which will tell you what files it is transferring. Then we can specify the username, BlueMonkey at Forensics, at the hostname, which is 192.168.10.102, colon. And then the files we want to copy, which is slash var slash www slash html slash star. And then finally, we want to name the target or the destination folder. So we're going to say tilde slash target files. If this is the first time you're logging into the remote machine, it will ask you to confirm the key fingerprinting process. Type yes to continue and then it will ask for the password. Enter the appropriate password and it will transfer the requested files. Once it's done, we can take a look at the target files by doing ls-l of tilde slash target files. And we do see that it transferred over the three files that were in that HTML folder on that remote host. If you have certain files you want to acquire from a remote machine over the network, 
you can use the FTP or File Transfer Protocol command. The basic command FTP is not secure as it transmits data in the clear. If security is desired, use the secure FTP command SFTP. The important thing to note is that to use FTP or SFTP, we need the login credentials for the remote machine. So let's assume that we have everything we need. Let's go ahead and CD into 2D target files. We're going to launch the FTP command, SFTP, blue monkey 4 and 6, at 192.168.10.102. Once we've connected with the credentials, we can hit LS. Right, notice the prompt is different because we're not on a local machine right now. We are actually on the 192.168.10.102. So we have nothing in our home folder, which is fine. Let's cd into the slash etsy folder. And then we do an ls. We see a ton of files, which is expected. Let's go ahead and get all of the files that end in .conf. So we're going to do get star .conf. And once all those files get transferred to exit, we can just type by, B-Y-E. Now that we're back to a Linux prompt, let's type ls to see all the files that were transferred over. And we can see that it transferred a whole lot of files that end in .conf. Netcat is another tool that can be used to transfer logical files. From the listener side, set up a listener to an unused port. We're going to be using 54321, and then redirect the output to a file. So we're going to do nc dash l dash p five four three two one greater than tilde slash target files slash nc underscore output dot tar dot gz from the client side set up a connection to the same port on the listener side and read in a file from standard in the file will now be transferred from the client to the listener so tar dash c slash etsy slash star dot conf pipe that to nc 192.168.10.1054321. When we're done transferring, you can hit control C. From the listener side, we can check the output file to verify the transfer. So we can do an ls minus l of tilde slash target files. And we can see the contents of the tarball by doing tar dash tf nc output dot tar dot gz. Netcat can also be used to transfer image files as well. It doesn't really care. As far as Netcat is concerned, bits are bits. In the instance where the subject machine cannot be opened up to extract the internal hard drive and the machine does not have a high-speed port like SATA or USB 3 but does have a gig E port, it may be faster to extract the data via the network port. For this demo, we will be using the DC3DD command to image the hard drive from the subject machine and use Netcat to transfer that data across the network to a hard drive attached to a forensic workstation. On the forensic machine, again, set up the Netcat listener to listen on port 54321 and write out the data to a file named evidence123.dd. So we're going to do nc-l-p54321 greater than tld slash target files slash evidence123.dd. Step 3. On the source machine, image the hard drive in conjunction with a Netcat sender on port 54321. In this case, we added the count for the dd command to limit the amount of data image for this demo. We're just going to image 1 meg, but even if it's 1 gig or 1 terabyte, the concept is the same. So we're going to do sudo dc3dd if equals slash dev slash sdb which is our quote-unquote hard drive, cnt equals 2k, 
So again, we're going to limit our data transfer to just one meg of data. Hash equals MD5. Log equals slash temp slash ncat that log. And then pipe that output to netcat at IP 192.168.10.100 at port 54321. And once the transfer is finished on the forensics machine, we can actually verify the hash of the file that was transferred by using the md5sum command. So we're going to do md5sum tilde target files slash evidence123.dd. And here we see that the destination MD5 is the same as the MD5 from the imaging, so we, we know the data transferred was valid. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about acquiring data from machines over a network. We used rsync, sftp, and netcat to logically copy data from one machine to another. Then we used the dc3dd command in conjunction with the netcat command to image one machine and write the data across the network to another. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.